The Bad Batch Season 3 Episode 1 Thoughts. This episode is called Confined. Spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. Another episode I love. The show is rated TVPG, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah, at the start we're told about the creatures, which come up again later, but by the end of this episode we still have not seen them. So that's, yeah. Um, I really appreciate the sound design. The, the like, They really do sound terrifying. And we get some great characterization with Hemlock. You know, yeah, like the the... The tech, like specifically, said, you know, should we should we send someone to to rescue them? He's like, no, let's you know, they're they're definitely gonna gonna die here. This that would be a waste of resources, you know, just yeah, and yeah, um, Omega has been given basically chores to do. You know, she's helping with the the research and taking care of the animals. And, of course, because she's Omega, true to form, she has befriended one of these, you know, like, they're, they're you know, the, the Empire is trying to make these, oh, you know, big, tough, scary, you know, and she's like, oh, you poor baby, you want, here, you want some, some food? I, I brought you some food, it's, be nice, don't, you know, I have to clean your wound, you, you have to behave, no teeth, you know, just, yeah. And, you know, as per usual, very, very common for, for Star Wars, you know, pure evil, the Empire, defeated by pure good, innocence, basically. You know, a lot of the, the biggest heroes of, of Star Wars start out these very innocent, you know, idealistic characters. And, yeah, um, Emery does take blood from Omega and Nala say the moment she re realizes that that's the case she you know discards the the sample and says tell no one and then there's the thing about you know oh the the I, f I forget the exact line but you know Nala say brings up the the blood samples they're they're drawing and Omega asks oh from the clones and we don't get details she just says not from the clones, <laughs> which, yeah, that's that's very ominous. And let's see, right? I quite appreciate you know here early in the episode it's set up. You know the the Empire has these, you know like collars on the the Lurka hounds, and you know yeah they they it it's because yes. And they, you know, they press a button, and it it calls, you know, opens the door, presses, you know, calls the calls the hounds in, and then they close the the door behind it, you know. So this is there is definitely an element of, you know, in in real life you can use some of this stuff to, to train dogs, but it's clearly in this very inhumane animal cruelty kind of way, and. Let's see. Yeah, and and you know she, I like that she calls it Batcher. Like it's an honorary member of the Bad Batch. That's adorable. As Omega is in general, and yeah, you know at first it's it's very it's, you know it's not really behaving. You know she gets the gets at the food and it eats it better, better. You're not you when you're hungry. And. It, you know, because she's lonely, she's made this this little doll out of the, um, yeah, the the materials. I really appreciate that this, like, you know, the the show is, you know, if you if you look up the show on IMDb, the three main genres are animation, which is not a genre, action and adventure. Not a lot of action and adventure in this episode, especially in this first like maybe half of the episode. I really appreciate that because it's a prison. You know, it feels like a prison. Okay, sure, Emery, not really a prison for Omega. I quite appreciate the detail that she didn't say that that was also the case for Crosshair. You know, 
And, and I do appreciate, I'm not sure we've heard Emery lie to Omega yet, so it is possible that she at least perceives it as Omega is not really a, a prisoner there. But, yeah, you know, it feels like a prison to Omega, so, it and, and it's this thing of, you know, day after day after day, and, you know, early on we see her mark, I think it's her sixth day, you know, at the end of season two we saw her captured, now it's six days, and then, you know, I, I didn't sit down and count, but, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 days or something after the time skip. So, yeah. And, and you know, it's a it's a classic. The, the prisoner carves, uh, um, you know, yeah, marks off each day. And, let's see. Yeah, we, we learned that Batcher was, was hurt. And is set to be terminated if it doesn't heal. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Um, like a lot of Star Wars media, this episode does a really great job making us absolutely hate these villains. You know, just like both the the this uncaring droid and Dr. Hemlock are just so despicable throughout. I yeah. I really do love like there's there's so many villains in Star Wars that, like, we love to hate. And it's just, it's so good. You know, a hero's only as good as his villain. And... Let's see. Then we have the... Um, um, right, the, the, yeah, we have the, the, you know, Omega is trying to, to, you know, she's, yeah, she's talking to, to Crosshair, and he... You know, he insists he would not hesitate to leave her behind if he got a chance to, to run. And she insists that that can't be true. And, you know, she says, you don't belong in here. And he says, I do. You know, he legitimately does feel like his actions, yeah, he, he does belong there. This episode does a really great job of telling us where these two characters, yeah, really... Well, yeah, those are the two that have, that there's some change. I'm not sure Emery and Hemlock have particularly changed since last, or, or Nala, say, for that matter. But, but yeah, Omega and, and Crosshair, definitely, yeah. And, and they take the doll away from her, you know, oh, no personal possessions, just, yeah. I really appreciate it, because that is, yeah, that is a, TV PG rated thing you can do that communicates cruelty. You know, there's there's a lot of cruelty that you absolutely cannot get away with on that kind of rating. But yeah, you know, everyone can understand this is, you know, she's lonely. This is all she has. Yeah. Let's see. And Omega, once again, showing how badass she can be. You know, Hemlock is like, you know, saying this stuff and she says, or what? <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, Hemlock had thought of that. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes when you're a kid, you can think you have something figured out, but an adult has thought ahead kind of thing. Yeah, you know, he's going to hurt Crosshair. And it is kind of sweet that Emery does give her the doll back near the very end of the episode, which does also, you know, so she didn't have it destroyed, which I can imagine was probably the order she was given, you know, if, like, she wasn't told, you know, you can't have any personal possessions right now, she was told no personal possessions, period, you know, and we close on Batcher howling to, to express that it, it misses Omega you know, just, yeah, really, really gets to you. Also really powerful scene when she is trying to get Batcher to, to go, and, you know, it's like, because cause it wants her to come with, you know, and, and she tells it and the audience, you know, although we the audience had already figured that this was probably the case, she really is determined not to leave without crosshair which I mean she knows what he did you know in in the first two seasons so that is yeah 
but you know she does you know she does really feel like he is one of you know he is still one of the bad batchers but yeah absolutely love this yeah um I guess by the time I might, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to figure out exactly when I, I, yeah, you'll 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 know it when it when I've done the the yeah the next episode or the the one after that. I I might not wait until tomorrow or the day after because I really this is this was a really really strong opener as you know every episode of, of the Bad Batch has been excellent so far but yeah see you soon probably